Yeah, the Harlem Globetrotters were in town and they just come by to see my mom. Remember? Yeah. They were dribbling her head off the fucking headboard like a, like a basketball. He gave me a dollar too yeah, when he walked curly, in. Yeah, Curly come out and, you know, he patted me on the head <laughs> and gave me a fucking lollipop. And then uh, then a guy got out with an Uzi and murdered. Uh, yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody. We had me and Bunny, we had bullet brains all over us. Yeah. It was, all right, stop, time out. What would you do if you had a million dollars? Tell you what I'd do, man. You know, two chicks at the same time. Some real nigga shit, you real nigga story, you know what I'm saying? This beat is so, so rich. We have a special um, podcast tonight um, brought to you by Broadway Home Improvement, best roofers yeah, they're good. in New England. Yeah. Yeah. Quick, um, too. Yep. Also, shout out. The Point Clothing Lounge. Can you see that? TP, South Boston. My guy, Brendan, doing great over there. I went over there this week, and he has, you know, just real, real good quality stuff. And I don't want to say yuppie clothes, just people that know how to dress. Like, like, um, like it's not like super expensive, but it's like cutting edge, like fashion, like real nice stuff. And I'm trying on stuff, and I'm realizing, you know, when, you know, I'm going to sit here and fucking... Um, be uh, self-deprecating or anything, but I, I've been, I've been, you know what self-deprecating is, buddy? Yeah. When you yeah. talk shit about yourself. <laughs> yes. um, and my, I've been eating like shit for like two months. I haven't been going to the gym. I'm out of shape. My, and I'm like, no wonder why this stuff don't fit me good. You see the models and the pictures wearing it, right? And here I am with a body like Homer uh, Simpson trying to put on these fucking, you know, nice jeans and shit. And, you know, some of it's ill-fitting, but that's on me. I got to, um, I got to step my game up. But tonight we have a special podcast. Yes, There's know. somebody claiming to be from the Boston area, South Boston specifically, which he's not. Claiming to be an Irish. He's all over the social media now, right? Bundy Bundy yeah. pointed it out to me. This guy's all over fucking TikTok and Instagram and he's on Dangerous pod. guy. Yes, yes. According to him, dangerous. he's very, very, very dangerous fella. You know, he's... um. He started early, too. Yeah, he started killing people when he was like three. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he claims to be Irish organized crime and also, what is he claiming to be? Shut that fucking phone off. <laughs> He's claiming to be, um, what, is, what is that? Hold on one second. Uh, but the, it was a blood, right? Yeah, but it's like, um, oh, I got to save this thing. Shit. Yeah, he's claiming to be a, is it a general. Five-star general. Five-star general, yep. right? Oh, wow. He's, up he's claiming to be a five-star general under UBN, which is United Blood Nation, I think. I'm not uh, too up to date on uh, on that stuff, but I believe it's United Blood Nation, which, which you know, everyone knows the blood. Well, not everyone. The bloods were started out in uh, Southern California, uh, Los Angeles, uh, maybe Compton, uh, Watts around there. Became a prison gang, and then in New York, in I don't know, maybe early two thousands. I don't even think it was late nineties. Uh, United Blood Nation was founded, which is I think it's like an umbrella, which it's like every all the East Coast Bloods kind of fall under their rules or something. So this guy has um, has a blood tattoo with a like a general and a star on it, like he's a leader in this gang. So I, I'm just I'm watching this guy's clips and I'm I'm looking at the comments. And my mind's blown because, you know, you know, this guy's, he's a, he's a bean shooter. That's what a bean shooter is. Yeah, somebody who's, shit. yeah, somebody, that's really where that name comes from. Bean shooter. Uh, my friend P-Dub in Staten Island, just call everyone that. And people don't know what it is. They're like, what is it? Is it Boston bean town? Is it pill? And people don't think it's a sexual nature, but no, it's, it's just somebody who's constantly exaggerating. And this guy, I mean, we got to show you some clips on this guy. And the first thing I did was... I called up everybody I know in South Boston and uh, the Goodmans or their father, Brian, is a fucking legend, right? Who's a real, uh, you know, he's a real deal kind of guy and he ended up becoming an actor and he sold the, the, the rights to his life story and made a movie, What Doesn't Kill You. And, you know, I asked him and he asked him and then on and on. Um, I know Pat Nee pretty well. I didn't ask him, but he was like a, a crime partner, a whitey bulge with the Mullen gang. But I didn't even bother going to his house and asking him because I know he doesn't know who this guy is because nobody knows who he is. 
the first thing I did was clown the guy on my story. And if anyone, you know, knows me, I could put a random guy on my story and someone will message me, hey, it happened to me. Hey, that's my dad, like at Home Depot. I put a thing yesterday and it ended up being someone and I, I removed the video because I was clowning the person. But I put some stuff about this guy and especially this guy saying he's from South Boston. I guess he was born in Weymouth. My guy, 1090 Jake, if you don't know him, give him a follow. He's got a gigantic YouTube page. He's almost in a million followers on YouTube. He pulls up paperwork on guys and he exposes a lot of people. And I immediately sent it to him and said, have you ever heard of this guy? And, and he did a, he did a deep dive on him and it says he was born in Weymouth. And I have a lot of followers in this area, you know, uh, Boston, South Boston, Braintree, Quincy, Weymouth, you know, and, you know, all around Boston, Charlestown, East Boston, you know, all around basically. And not one person messaged me and said, yeah, that's, you know, so-and-so. I was locked up with him. He's a serious guy. And so the guy's... We got We just got to dive into these clips, all right? <laughs> first. Expose them. Yeah, first clip. Where are we? Where is this? Right here. They said my mother, when she got bad on the drugs, um, she would entertain <laughs> gentlemen a lot. Ah. And you just, you know, when you're a young kid, you know, six, seven, eight years old, and you're listening to three guys <laughs> pound your mother in the other room. <laughs> Because it does something to you. Um, I saw, I saw my first murder at five. Wow, me too. I was told to go sit on the front porch, um, <laughs> and after my mother got done entertaining, um, a gentleman came out and he would always give me a dollar after he got done screwing my mother. I was that gentleman. Spoiler alert. He was alert. a drug dealer. He uh, was a heroin dealer, and. Um, Gave me a dollar. Oh. <laughs> Cadillac pulled up. Oh, Guy got out. Yeah. Double barrel shotgun, saw it off and blew his brains out. Ooh. While he was standing next to me, he was just all over me. Oh, yeah. Hey, he knew his cars, huh? Yeah. yeah. Cadillac. Cadillac. All right, all right. Let's, time out. Let's, let's, dig, let's delve into this fucking story of his, all right? Um... Ironically, I saw my first murder at five. Bundy was with me, actually. Yeah, um, yeah I was I the, think I was too. This guy, where do I start with this guy? First off, anybody who is, I don't know. I mean, I don't know when age, what age I started forgetting everything, basically. I might have a video. I might have a memory of like, Getting my first pair of Nikes, you know. I remember they were Cortez's Nike. It was a big deal. But I might have been like 12 then. It wasn't like the kids today with the Air Jordans. But who remembers anything when they're five? You know, this one uh -huh. this one gentleman who was a heroin. And I remember every time he pounded, took my mom to Pound Town. He, uh, would, he pulled in with a Cadillac. He, he would hand me a dollar. And, and white walls. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this this Fuck guy, God. this guy, you know what I mean? I'd like to talk to his mom if she's still around, you know? She's probably fucking rolling in her grave like, what? Yeah, I'd like um, to talk to him. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, we'd love to get him on here. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, this guy, like, come on, buddy, all right? What else we got? We, we got some, we, the, this guy's, hold on. Let's see, Jane, where are we? He stabbed me twice. Oh, yeah. Stabbed me twice. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. This is this. Come on. Let's delve back into this fucking clown. What do we got? Stabbed me twice. Stabbed me twice. Ah, twice. Fought. Fought out of bed. Destroyed the bedroom. Threw him down the stairs. Um, so, I uh, got 32 inch bayonet type knife. Oh, yeah, the bayonet. And uh, he landed at the bottom and I started to cut his throat. <laughs> he was 16 years old. Oh, 16 year old hit man. Uh, yeah. It was, a it, was his in, it was his initiation into a gang. Oh, yeah. Uh, fucking this guy. We could listen, we could do this for six episodes in a row with this guy. 
16 year old hitman was sent to kill him by me and he yeah he got stabbed twice but that didn't that no. didn't do much yeah well he's in the gang so yeah he threw him yeah. down the stairs and then he yeah. who the fuck has a bayonet <laughs> <laughs> So he strapped a bayonet to his rifle and he, he went and what did he say? He cut his head off? He tried, yeah, he tried. He cut his throat. Oh, oh Dangerous kid. Yes, yes, he is. I mean, the stories with this guy, right? Yeah, he was well, in, what grade was he in? Fourth? Yeah. Fifth fourth, grade, yeah. yeah. Fifth grade, yeah. He was, uh, all right. What else? Well, hold on. We got to, <laughs> I got to really start enjoying this. Let's see what else we got from him. Here we go. Most dangerous man you've ever been in the company of. Bundy. Myself. <laughs> Myself. <laughs> because... I, I was scaring myself because I, I, I didn't know what I was. I didn't, I didn't know how to turn what the, that. Where the fuck's that accent coming from? And I mean, you, if you haven't done it. Yeah, where is he from, this guy? Dub, I think Dublin. You literally, you know, you know, put someone, you know, tie them in a fucking chair and, and put their hands flat on a table and pound nails through their hand and then cut their fingers off wow. and cauterize that with a blowtorch or a little portable <laughs> torch because I just needed to know what the fuck information you had. It smells that you'll never forget. Oh. <laughs> Was he from Ireland? Listen, no, no. I, no? This, I, I, I'm just... You know, I, I'll come on here and tell stories. Once in a while, someone will be like, yeah, make up another story. And I get it, right? You, you know, I think it was the one where I, the Dominicans were, I was on the hood of the car and someone put a comment, you know, tell another story that never happened. And I get it, right? If you're, you know, if you weren't running around and, you know, being an idiot, getting high and stealing and robbing and, and committing crimes, right? And a lot of petty crimes I committed, right? Like, let's face it, you know, yeah, I did yep. some shit. I'm not, I, I'm not like from the movie The Town, like taking down armored trucks. Like I was like dope sick and, and going in a bank and handing them a note or, or stealing cars or stealing heavy equipment with Bundy, right? I, 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 I try to, you know, keep it real as they say, be a, be a hundred percent, not try to like, you know, I guess everybody, and I try not to. I guess everybody embellishes a little, right? Oh, he was six five. I, you know, right, I right. fucking hit. You know, like it's, I guess it's human nature, right? To him, and I, tr I honestly try not to. I try to just say things exactly how they happen. But you know, I'm sure, like, like I said, it's human nature, right? People embellish. But this guy is in fantasy land. Yeah, <laughs> this guy, you know. I, Tying him to a chair and and the blowtorch, yeah, cauterize. That's uh, what I do too. I, I'd uh, I'd cauterize. Um, that that actually reminds me of a story. But I want to get back into this guy. But my friend Boo Boo and um, Jafrida, rest in peace. He died on um, Christmas um, seven years ago. You know, they had him in the movie The Fight of Boo Boo. And he, um, a guy, another guy who's passed away now, Tommy Sparks, put in a bunch of bets under Boo Boo's name. With a with a real with a real gangster from the North End who ended up getting killed, and Boo Boo owed this guy a bunch of money, and the guy kidnapped him and tied him to a chair, and you know what he did to him? No, it's the craziest thing. I remember what happened to Boo Boo telling me, and for the rest of his life, this bothered him, not mentally, I mean physically, right. Because you know when you get a cut like on the inside of your nose, it never really heals, and always scabs up, and you pick it off, and the guy tied him to a chair and took a scalpel knife and put it up each nostril and scraped it all the way around. And then he pulled it out, flicked it out and sliced them here and here on this side. <laughs> yeah, boo boo. Uh, yeah, well, that's kind of crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, this shit does works, happen. It works. Uh, that guy ended up getting murdered who did that. But stuff like this might happen, you know, in a movie right. or, you know, I mean, Unfortunately, it wasn't a movie for Boo Boo. It really happened. But this guy, yeah. this guy, let's. Uh, I can't believe he says what he says. It's, it's just the comedic value is it's unprecedented. Yeah, where is he? All right. 
What do we got here? Let's see. Three men can keep a secret. If two are dead. <laughs> <laughs> Three men can keep a secret. Oh, yeah. If two are dead. Yeah, yeah. Good one. Clown boy. All right. What else? We, let's see this one. Be as ruthless as people say. Who's worse? It was a psychopath. He was a psychopath. So was Stephen Funny, Rifleman. Yeah, you read all this in a book. I know all this too. I read all the books too. Right? Yeah, yeah. That kid. Well, Stephen. Stephen. He's sleeping buddies. with his stepdaughter who he raised. Uh, I'm done with listening to this clown with this. Let's go to the next one. Because this is this is knowledge anybody. And anybody from this area who's ever fucking picked up a book or saw a fucking movie about Whitey Bulger and Steve Lemmy could tell these fucking stories. Uh, yeah, he's just, he's a fucking fantasy land. What's this one? It got to a point um, as I got older, oh, yeah. there was no enjoyment in it anymore. <laughs> there, was, there was no enjoyment. In it. Yes. it was just a necessity. You know, it's like... Uh, it's like having Bundy for a friend. Like if we grew up together, right? <laughs> Played fucking kick the can or stick ball. Stick or ball. Bikes well, together time out, time out. Can I pause this fucking clown? Yeah. Stick later in ball. life, Where you are you? something. Fucking Little Italy and fucking and, um, New York City, like... Stick ball. We don't play stick ball. Right? No, I'm sorry. The problem it. was it had to be fixed, and I, I you know, it's no, yeah, we have to haunting and troubling when you look at somebody and um, you grew up with them, and now they're on their knees, blowing you, pissing themselves, <laughs> yes, some and you give them a themselves, <laughs> crying to God, yeah. begging, crying for their mother, oh, and it's just like you know. It's no fun in that, Hey, man, buddy. you brought this on yourself, man. It's what I told you when Bundy rules. was on his knees. He's ready to fuck. I got to a point um, as I got older. Bundy was about to get stabbed in the mouth with a meat shank. And he just <laughs> <laughs> said, listen, no Bundy, I got to do this. no enjoyment in what I'm about to do. Now open up and say, ah, my friend. <laughs> ah, the <no> fucking <laughs> idiot. <laughs> oh, that's great. What do we got? Let's see some more of this guy. Mother was uh, a prostitute. She got hooked on drugs. Mm. Um, she eventually died of uh, AIDS. Oh, I'm gonna say that's um, fucking I didn't really total fabrication. It happens attempted murders, uh, bank robberies, uh, extortion, racketeering, uh, a lot of violence. All violence. All violence. Cadillac pulled up. Oh uh, yeah, we. You are stuck on these Cadillacs. Yeah, huh? yeah. This is. This is Double barrel shotgun saw it off and blew his brains out. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor kid. Is that it? Is that it? What else we got? We got another one somewhere. And, um, this fucking asshole. All right. Um, there's one more from um, another fucking podcast. Can I swear on YouTube? How's that work? Is that all right? Yeah. All right. This guy, the only thing I say about this guy is if he's making money off this, then whatever. But he's a fucking clown. Like, I, just just a total fucking asshole. His, where are we? Where are we? Here's another one. Stealing cars when I was 14. Not like act of crime, but the Me first too, more okay. serious offense at 14, 15 was boosting cars. Yeah. She was a train yard out in the South Shore. Yep. I used to get a tip off from the cops. Yeah, when I was, when I was actually watching. The cops used cars. to tip me and Bundy up to it. We were stealing bikes. Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. remember the first time ever seen in person, Bulger? What was the first interaction like? I stole a guy's car. Hot start. It's like a I boat. think I was probably 13 or 14. Yeah, 13. I was sent to go collect some money. Yeah. The I, guy was giving me a hard time. I used to collect keys money in the bar, too, when I was 13. <laughs> And he showed up at a uh, police house. And then from there, I assume, like, if he does some sort of favor for you at that time, he kind of is starting to pull you, pull you in a little closer. I had my own crew going, all kids under 18. Yeah, me too. Cars a night. When I was 13. And they were going right in the crusher. And they were getting loaded up on the back of a flatbed and taken right up to scrap metal. Again. Yeah. Wow. What so an it was operation. Like, a 24 hour process. like did yeah. you ever take someone's life? There's no statute of limitations on murder. <laughs> Started stealing cars when I was 14. Not like act of right, Stop, stop. That is when <sighs> Yeah, we, buddy, we can't talk about this. <laughs> There's no statue of limitations. Yeah. Fucking clown. What a fucking asshole this guy is. This is, I mean, how is nobody. 
I guess they don't care. It's just clickbait, right? These people on these pages, they don't care. The people that are interviewing them, they don't care that this is all nonsense, right? I mean, uh, he claims uh, when Howie went to die, they offered him a bag of cash, take over the Winter Hill Gang. The Winter Hill Gang has been gone since, I don't know what, early 90s? Since Whitey went on the lamb and all, all that stuff. I mean, there's no more Winter Hill Gang. Um, this guy's saying, I mean, it goes on and on. He was saying he knew Buddy McLean from like the... The gang was in the 60s. I mean, this guy's like, I'm 54. This guy's like, I think he might be a couple years younger than me. I'm not sure. But it don't, none of it adds up. No. Like, these no. guys are from a different era that he's talking about. Yeah. You know, the Whiteys and the Pat Knees and the Steve no, Fleming. When he was in PC, he was doing a lot of reading. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the Monteranos, all these guys. And, you know, this stuff. I mean, it's common knowledge, and especially, like, you know from being in prison, right? Um, you know, we're not in there reading Shakespeare. You know, it's mostly true crime. And anytime something about Boston comes up, yeah, we love it because, like, we're from Lowell, which is 30 minutes outside of Boston. But, you know, grew up in the in this area, always in town, always in Boston, running around. A lot of friends from there from being locked up. And it's it's basically close to us. But when you read a book and it's based in Boston, oh, I know that, you know, I know that store, I know that bar, I know, I know here or there. So it's cool. It's like seeing a movie when it's, you know, your hometown or, or whatever. It's always cool to see. Yeah. So whenever a book like that comes out, I mean, everybody reads it, right? No matter what it is, even if it's fucking bullshit, right? It's it's everyone reads it, and that's that's what I think this guy did. And somehow he parlayed parlayed this 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 whole story into it. There's um. Where's the other one? There's another clip. His son, you know, got arrested for murder, and he called him up. And can we find that one? Well, that's a good one too. Give right. this kid a wedgie next oh, time yeah. we see him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see what we got here. She's a Chase. Chase has been arrested. Sixteen years old. Chase. That's what I mean. He's been arrested. How many kids? And you she Chase. said they're gonna let him call you from the police department. <laughs> I said, right. I hung up. A few minutes later, I got a call. Cool. Talk to a uh, lieutenant or captain first. I said, why, already did. Would, why is my son arrested? What? Well, he's the prime suspect in a serious crime. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, he's under arrest for murder. The gangster's paradise. Look, Coolio. Where's the tears? He's making noises and fucking wiping away, but I don't... I don't so I got on the phone with him. <laughs> said, don't say anything. I said, buddy, don't say anything. <laughs> Whatever you do, buddy. Went to the lawyer, I guess, sir. Yeah. You know how I've taught you. What thinking if you were involved in this shit? I'll get him to confess real quick. Don't say a word, but answer this question. Please say something dumb. Say I just want to be like you. Oh, good job. <laughs> I just want to be like you, Bundy. <laughs> I just, Bundy. Uh, I, I, do you blame yourself? Do you blame yourself? <laughs> no, there's a, he's not even an Irish accent. Uh, I'm sorry Chase, for that. Chase. Uh, Chase. A fucking moron. <sighs> Who the fuck names their kid named Chase? Did you mean he kill his name Chase? No. Up around the way, Bundy. Nope. What do we call it? Upstate. Upstate. I was upstate. I never seen him. No. <laughs> I never but seen it's him. actually with all the killers uh, upstate. I never seen him. Um, this, you know, if this is a juvenile, this is something I can I can say unequivocally everything this guy says is bullshit. His kid maybe got arrested for murder. Highly doubt it. Yeah. But if he's a juvenile, we would know. I mean, that's the only thing where maybe someone will come up. I know, I know Chase. He, you know, yeah. he killed fucking sick. All right. So then this guy goes on to say he was a he was a, a member of the Made Men rap group that stabbed Paul Pierce. He went to prison for that. I don't know. With the tattoos on his face. Maybe he was like a roadie for them or something, you know, fucking piping them down. I don't know. Um what else? He's an Irish gangster. Yeah. Um, the maid man, he went to prison for shooting two Chinese people, or Asian people in South Boston. That whole thing just, you know, why not just say Chinatown? 
You know what I mean? I'm not seeing any. No, no, nothing Ch- adds People up. of Chinese, Asian descent getting shot in South Boston. No. I'm going to say in the history of South Boston, no, <laughs> there's never been a shooting involved two Chinese people. I mean, I'm going out on a limb. Obviously, that that's could have happened. But I'm saying it fucking never happened. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Uh, it's like dominoes. <laughs> so when I first, when this start, when this first started popping up on my feed, I sent it to um, 1090 Jake, who exposes people on Instagram and YouTube, primarily rappers. Jake is one of the only white bloods, like real white bloods. I mean, you got these kids in the neighborhood that these little thing. I'm sure there's a ton of them, but like in in the real, like he's. Well, I shouldn't even say that. I don't want to put him out there. Uh, like saying he's a blood. Am I like, you know what I mean? Get the nah. kid indicted or something. We might have to cut this out, Justin. Um, we might have to just cut that part out. Um, somehow work this in. So I sent this. I sent this to 1090 Jake, who I'm not saying he's a gang member or anything, but he was in Florida and... Um, you know, I don't want to say something stupid and, and you know what I mean? But let's just say he knows a lot of, of rappers and yeah, gang members. Yeah, he knows his shit. Okay. There's not many white white uh, bloods. I only know of one. <laughs> and uh, I'm not saying no names. And there's one other one that's in like Rikers Island that's a serious blood and he's white under UBN, he's putting in work out there, but it's a very rare thing. You know, there might be these young kids and these neighborhood gangs and factions, but as far as like real bloods, there's not many. And this guy, you know, saying he's a, a general under UBN and he's a blood when he turned 13, bloods weren't invented yet. So I sent this to 1090 Jake and said, Jake, have you seen any of this guy? And he said, you want me to do a deep dive on him? And within minutes, he had some paperwork on this guy. And I was like, this is so, I'm like, that's so awesome, right? I don't Exposed. know you know, I don't know how he does it, but he does it, okay? So there's, um, there's a few things. There's a few things. He, Jake looks and says, this guy follows me. He's got like 1,300 followers on Instagram. This this guy, he goes, he fucking follows me. So I'm like, oh, if we could rope this guy in and just get him on a podcast and just, you know, we had put him in the, get him up on the witness stand and just eviscerate him. But um, Jake started um, texting him. And there's one clip in one of these podcasts where they say, how much time have you done? And he like doesn't bat an eye. He's like, you know, 26 years, seven months. 13 days or something nonsensical, right? Um, so he finds some paperwork on him where he was in the Dartmouth County Jail. And if you've been in jail, you you can kind of read through certain things. You know when somebody pulled a stunt. Sometimes uh, somebody's someone's up against it and they know they're going to get it. And they don't want to go to the cop and say... Hey, listen, I can't live here. You know, I, I want to go to protective custody, which I call a PC. A lot of times guys will pull a stunt. Sometimes guys will owe money for a dope bill, yep. what have yep. you, whatever it is. And they got to get out of this block. Sometimes guys will claim somebody is an enemy. Hey, I can't, you know, I can't live with um, Bundy in the block or, or whatever. It's, it, you know, they, they call the stunts, the, you know, stunt. So when yep. you read through this paperwork from... Dartmouth uh, House of Correction, Bristol County. You, it, it it just it just smells like a stunt right from the get go. He's actually suing the jail. He's one of these guys who sues. We looked into him some more. Or he'll sue you. He'll fall down the stairs here, Justin, and sue you. Or be in your car. You know, he's the guy's just a fucking just a con man, liar. You know, all that stuff. So he was in the um, Dartmouth House of Correction and his lawsuit he was deposed and we have the paperwork when he got questioned he got deposed he said he was stabbed in the arm who the fuck got stabbed in the arm stabbed in the arm by two crips and when the cops found him he was by himself bleeding in the arm claiming he got stabbed by two men and he's holding a knife so they maced him and gave him a beating, which is, I wish I could, we could get that. Maybe we could somehow get that from the Dartmouth House of Correction. Yeah. He was given a beating. They put him in the restraint chair and maced him. So he's trying to sue the jail saying, you should have put me in protective custody. You knew I was a blood and it was all Crips here. And, um, and when he was deposed in this, we have the, um, 
we have the statements here. Let me see. Jake sent me here. It's kind of blurry. Please identify. This is him talking. Interrogation number two. Please identify every penitentiary, jail, or house of correction where you have been incarcerated and provide the dates for which you were incarcerated at each institution. Okay, it starts in 93. It's the gangster here. 93, 93, 30 days, Norfolk County Jail. October 94, 30 days, Norfolk County Jail. I don't think a real killer, buddy. Yeah, yeah. 95, June 30 days, Norfolk County Jail. And he claims he's from South Boston, but he's never in South Bay. Or no. you know, Deer Island was long gone by then. Deer Island was gone and. When was I locked up for us? 87. They closed Deer Island. Right yeah, after that, maybe 90. 89, 90. Yeah. Um, oh, here's one. 10 days, Plymouth County. Here's another one. Six months, Plymouth County. Now you have to 97, six months, Norfolk County Jail. Oh, here's one. Five, six, 98, two and a half years, Norfolk County Jail. Uh, 2001, two years, Norfolk County Jail. It's these county bids. You know, he did half the time. So, so far... Four and a half, yeah, five and a half, about, five yeah. and a half and 90 days. So he's probably got two years in at this point up until 2005. So the 26 years ended up. Then in 2005, he got two years state bid, probably went right to minimum of the farm. 97, this goes back to 90, oh, 07. He got a year in Bonstable County out on the Cape. Then he's back to 64 days in 2010. Another six month bid in 2011. And then in 2011, MCI OCC Norfolk County says, he, he, this is his answer. Three to five years in 2014, says he was in Norfolk County, MCI Cedar Junction, and MCI Susan Baranowski, which is Shirley Max. But I'm not even. Yeah, I'm I was not there. Even, you weren't there? Are you there? there? Yeah, I was there. He wrapped up 2018. Yeah. Uh, never so, seen him. Yeah. So he's claiming he was in Shirley Max. No. So just everything, everything this guy says is fucking absolute, just bullshit. Fucking perform. It's amazing that people would have this guy on on his thing. So so Jake goes on, where is it? And he starts calling out his um his gang affiliation. All right, this is this is great too. <laughs> he says, Jake says, you was blood. And he says, no, misconception. I did business in prison with bloods. Oh. <laughs> I'm Irish organized crime. Retired. Let me Fuck tell it. you, right? I'm I'm with the Irish mob, Bundy. <laughs> yeah. There's no retiring. No, it's no. blood in. What the move? What was the blood move? in? Blood out. Blood in. Blood out. Yeah. You know, that's the only way we get out of this Fuck thing. Idiot. This thing of ours, <laughs> but <Bundy. laughs> Where is um, this kid now? <laughs> we need him. All right. So then Jake says, "Your paperwork says you claim to be a five-star general for the UBN." and became a blood at 13. He says, no, I did a lot of business with the UBN. Always was welcome at their table in prison. Wow. I'm Irish. He says, you don't remember saying this in Shirley Mass after saying you got stabbed by Crips in Bristol County because they didn't put you in PC? <laughs> now, Jake's, Jake's turning up the heat on him, basically saying you're a PC and you're a fraud. Yeah. Now... That's it. Someone basically, now he's pulling his card, right? Yeah. So let's see. His comeback was, I have had many ranks and affiliations. I can go anywhere at any time and I'm welcome at any table in any prison. Can you say the same? Am I a person you want to tango with? <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're not like that. You were claiming the UBN before it was made. Then you pulled a stunt to go to PC. <laughs> Jake, that's it. Now here we go. What what is his his comeback is? I enjoy my life, wife, uh, family, uh, and my mansion. Good call. Bob. Yeah, good, good uh, comeback. Uh, Fucking, this is it. So then he says to him at the end, Jake says, 24 years, nine months, 18 days, right? You a fiend from Weymouth. 
who's been making up stories his whole life. It was easy to find out about you. They should have cut that tattoo off your hand. <laughs> Big shout out to uh, 1090 Jake for helping me out with this. Um, we need some we need some more clips of this guy because it's just comedic gold, you know. Yeah. Justin, this week that's your thing, you know what I mean. We need to find some more <laughs> clips on this guy, uh, Sean Hicks. He's in hiding now. It's it's just mind blowing to me that not one person has messaged me because, like I said, not that I got the biggest social media, but around right. here, you know, it's right. it's good. It's over a hundred thousand now. They shadow banned me again yesterday over some post they removed that was. Fucking just stupid, man. And um, I had another post where I, I um, made a joke about someone, and I found out it was someone who, uh, whatever, I, I removed it. But it was it was pretty funny. So yesterday sucked. But oh, let's meet with this. You all right? Oh, um, fucking um, nobody said, oh, I know him, or I was locked up with him. And that's it's very uh, rare. Right. You know, there's no, this is, oh, that's right. my cousin. You know, he's a Somebody's fucking. Somebody's going to know you. Yeah, somebody's yeah. going to message me and say, even, even like on the bad part, like, oh, that kid's a bitch. I banged him out. Like, right. not one, which is, man, I put I put someone yesterday, they were walking a dog, a clown, whatever. It turned out it was a fucking, he's a young kid. I made a joke about him having ashy, um, Ashy fucking ankles or something, right? But I mean, within an hour or two, someone's like, oh, that's my nephew. And, and I thought it was an adult. And the kid was young. And I'm like, oh, my bad. And I removed it. And, and then they weren't like threatening me, like, take it down. But I immediately felt like a jerk. Like, oh, I can't be going around clowning some fucking kid who's 12, 13 years old. Like, it's not a good look. And, and I removed it. But my point of that story is immediately somebody knows who I put in the video. You know what right. I mean? If I put Justin, you know, his friend, oh, you're on Bean Shooter's story today and nothing on this guy. No. Nothing good, nothing bad, just nothing at all. And um, I mean, no. I mean, if he's making money because of it, then- He ain't making no money. No, right? He's full of shit. Yeah, he's full of shit. Um, just everything, you know? Saying yeah. he did all this time in jail and he did a bunch of 90-day bids yeah. and, a, and a two-year bid or whatever it was. And- uh, and yeah, there's more and more he shot two people. Uh, and yeah. kid, he calmed uh, his way onto that show. Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I feel like I had to, I had to say something about this guy. Yeah, yeah. You Just know, fought. I mean, even though I kind of enjoy watching it, where he's like, "Really <laughs> 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 got into yeah, it." Yeah, huh? yeah. The, the kid, did we do that? The sick to my stomach. The kid who fucking yeah. looked up to him. We did that yeah. one, right? Yeah. See, I'm fucking. I got all time or something. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was gonna go home and puke. Hey, I, his lips were quivering. I hate that he too, really buddy. Got into it. I, you know, I mean, maybe this guy would walk down the street now because he's fucking on every fucking, you know, it's on the explore page and he's on TikTok because of these fucking these videos this guy did on his on his thing. Maybe someone now would say, "Hey, yeah, you know, oh, you look familiar. I know who you are." Um, but for this guy to actually say, you know, kid went up to me, you're that guy who shot all those people, like. You never shot. Yeah. You like me, buddy. You never shot anybody. Yeah. You never stabbed anybody. No, no. You know what I mean? You've never like, you know, I saw uh dead body uh, overdoses. Like I've never seen someone murdered in front of me. You know what I mean? No. I mean, yeah, a lot of people have. I mean, you never know when it's going to happen. It doesn't mean you're know, this or that. If you saw somebody get killed, anybody could, could just be in the wrong place at the wrong time to see that, you know, but no. just, uh, you know, and, and the, and the fucking, you know, the irony of the whole thing is, you know, it made me sick. And, this, you know, you shot all these people. And that's why he looked up to me. And, and meanwhile, he's wearing a shirt. What does his shirt say? Do you, what kind of shirt does he have on? Killer. Killer yeah, let's yeah. fucking. Can we pull that up? What the fuck? kind? Of, what did he have on for a shirt? This guy's just. Come on, dude. Yeah, it's killer warning. Whoa. Killer warning. Uh, yeah. self the, the best. The best part of the whole thing might just be. Who's the scariest guy you ever met? <laughs> what? <laughs> what an answer, though, huh? Uh, I mean, you got to buy him a little bit with that answer. He like, like he's pondering it, like all these, you know, all these killers he's known. You know what yeah. I mean? And comes up with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's like um, someone could ask me, you know, Bundy. Ready? Yeah. Ask me. Who the funniest person I ever met was? Who was it? What are you going to ask me? Who was the funniest person I ever met? 
Who, well, excuse me? Who's the funniest person you ever met? The funniest person I ever met. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is me. You know why? Yeah, because I'm, I'm a funny guy. Yeah. Um, wow. <laughs> now, speaking of that, telling myself jokes. I remember I was in the hole once in uh when you were laughing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was in I was in the hole in Bill Rick, just a county jail, and I was in the hole for you know, you know, three months, six months, whatever, and at the time, there was a bunch of suicides, people trying to, they were pulling stunts, trying to kill themselves. So they actually took everybody's clothes. You had no bed sheets, just had that green, we just called the green monster, the green plastic mattress. I had no towel, no face cloth. So basically, I'm going to sell with nothing. <laughs> I don't have a book. I don't have a radio. There's no TV. I'm in there like three or four months at the time. And uh, a cop comes up to the cell and he's like, you know, dude, uh, you're in here with absolutely nothing. I'm like, yeah, I know. And he's like, and I hear you in here cracking up laughing all the time. And I just said, you know, a lot of material up here. And and that's a good thing. I, I've always been able to make myself laugh. So yeah. I could just sit there and tell jokes to myself all day. So I can. I Maybe I am the funniest, yeah. <laughs> funniest person I ever met. But yeah, this, this, uh, this guy, man, this, it's just been like every time another thing would pop up with him, I'm just like immediately like everybody else I talked to, Matty Ryan, Spunky, South Boston guy, grew up across from the L right there. He's been around, you know, the Goodmans, uh, Kevin Bartell. Uh, who else did we send it around to? Just, you know, everybody I know from that area, basically, like, does anybody know who this guy is? And they're like, no, I asked my dad. You know, I asked my uncle. I asked this one. I asked that. Nobody knows who he is. It's yeah. fucking, it's just amazing to me that you could try to just go on and just say, like, like I said, the only thing is, is he, is he making my, like, I guess he tried to write a book or sell a book. Then they ask him about the, like, he pulled off the biggest heist. You know, the guy's just, it's, it's too yeah, much. It's too much, Bundy. Uh, so yeah, we, uh, we had to, we had to talk about this guy. Uh, and, um, exposed. And uh, 1090 Jake. You know, yeah, funny good kid. Guy. You know, funny kid. Yeah, yeah, good guy, good guy. Hell, you know, he fucking pulled this guy's card basically and, and told him that. And his comeback is, "I enjoy my mansion." <laughs> <laughs> Someone's calling you a PC and a rat. You know what? Uh, I enjoy my mansion. Uh, fucking, this he's fucking. on Section Eight. Yeah, he did something. He, got, he, he got rental assistance from yeah. Raft. He's he's probably or, or he's one of them that moves in a place and doesn't pay rent for three years until they right. fucking they get the sheriff to drag him out the door. You know what I mean? I don't I don't I don't know, but I'm sure I'm, there's got to be somebody who knows this guy or his or his kid who's a killer. Apparently, if his kid is a killer, um, he's got. I just wanted to be like you, Dad. Hey, don't say anything till the lawyer gets. It. But let me just ask you this one question that will implicate yourself. What were you thinking if you were involved in this? I just wanted to be like you, Dad. Shut the fuck up. Oh, my God. All right. Um, what time we got, Justin? How long have we been, how long have we been doing this? Uh, just under an hour. Yeah. yeah. There's a quick one. Um what else we got going on? Uh, Mr. Bundy, we bought a scale last night. Yeah. Bundy's been uh, he's been on the treadmill. Yeah. He's starting off slowly but surely, and he's already making a little progress. He's eating yeah. better, and he, it's it's going to inspire me because I've been uh, – I've been fucking a mess, man. It's like anything else, whether I'm doing drugs or I'm drinking or I'm um, indulging in uh, – <laughs> scumbag behavior as we say i just fucking do everything and it's just like eating man when i'm eating like shit it's yeah, fucking all out. oh man and uh you know just now it's it's like the guilt it's like anything else when you've been sober for a while if you start getting high in the back of your mind it's ruined you're like fuck i know how this is gonna end this ain't good it's like when you're eating shitty right it's like you know it's releasing endorphins in your brain you're getting this rush you're eating pancakes and sugar and all this right yeah. and it's like you, you just it's just like addictive behavior, man. And then as soon as you're done, you're sitting there like, wow, I'm a f 
gigantic piece of shit. Yeah. You know, and uh, like I said about, you know, trying on the clothes and everything, looking in the mirror, it's like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And the older you get, the hotter it is, man. So you fucking young guys, nip it in the butt or arrest it, you know? Um, a lot of young guys follow me, a lot of athletes, high school, college athletes. You guys are good, man. Except for you old linemen, man. You better <laughs> you better fucking you better tighten up. <laughs> Go on a uh, diet. Yeah, you better tighten up because the older you get, man, the hotter it gets to take off, you know? Yeah. But it's like anything else when I'm working out and I start eating good, you start feeling good. You know what I mean? So it's it's um it's something I, I gotta I gotta get back into ASAP. I can't let Bundy start <laughs> You know yeah, what I mean? I I, um, so we're, we're checking Bundy's progress. He got on the scale the other night. He was 350, right? 351. 351, two nights yeah. ago. So we're going to um, we're gonna talk about this every week and uh, maybe do some Instagram posts. Uh, it's coming to, off. It's coming off. Yeah, I'm trying to get him jogging. I want to I want to jog like, um, like Rocky. I'm going to be in the car next <laughs> to you driving, just shouting inspirational, I'd motivational say. quotes. You got the music going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Rocky music, of course. You know what I mean? The, the, um, so that's, that's good, hopefully. You know, starting out. And uh, Bundy started like like a week ago, so it's not like a New Year's resolution thing. No. My father's a huge gym rat, and he's 80 now. He still goes to the gym at quarter or five in the morning, and, and every year he'd bitch about New Year's because of the New Year's resolution. All these people join gyms, and he's like, they'll be gone in a month. Yeah. You know, you pull up the parking lot's full. He's like, fucking somebody's on the machine and, and this and that. So – the whole New Year's resolution thing. I, ha I hate to be doing it at this time, but I, I really, it just it just worked out like this because I was doing good like two, three months ago and I went away on, on vacation and whenever I go, I say, oh, I'm going to go to the the gym in the hotel and I'm going to fucking crush it and I'm going to keep and then no. Yeah. Nope. And then it's like anything else with me. Once, once I break my cycle or a routine, it takes me forever to get back into it. So here's to, um, here's to looking good this summer and fucking, uh, yeah. And uh, starting out this new year on the right note, man, you know, yeah. it's, you know, what sucks about the new year is like, and another thing, the older you get, time flies, man. It seems like football season just started. Now it's like, what the fuck? It's just every Sunday it's on. It's, it's, it's just fun. You know, you, whether you want to bet on games, whether you're taking a few bets, whatever you're doing, it's like, I don't know, just football is everything. It just seems to make everything better. Even in, in jail and prison football season, it's good because it like, the time goes by, you know, quicker and it's, it's just fun. You know what I mean? The yeah. games and, and, uh, you know, betting on stuff, even though the split lines in jail, you can't win. It's ridiculous. But, um, yeah, that he'd know about that. I guess he was running the rackets in there too. Oh, yeah. 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 This guy, whatever his fucking name was, he's the, he was running the joint, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He was, that's probably, everyone was probably, kicking up a piece to him you know what i mean he get a small justin is he shaking you down over here at the, at the at the studio he might show up and want a little piece <laughs> of the action you know yeah. um yeah yeah football season's almost done man you know now hopefully you know i get in a couple of pools hopefully i hit a pool maybe run a small one at the sober house for the guys you know what i mean um just something to to make it fun you know what i mean uh thanksgiving and um I had a nice meal. I, I got a, I had a, a chef make a, a big meal for both of my sober houses. Um, that was good. Too. Yeah, that was, that was good. good. Super Bowl Sunday, we'll do a big thing there for the guys in the house. Um, I got a, um, I got a text yesterday from a lady in the, a lady whose son's in the house, and she's like, I, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't had my son in my life for three years. And it was just like a real heartfelt text, you know? Yeah, and I was like, yeah. oh, that's awesome. You know, when you hear that, like, you know, um, I was one of those guys in a sober house in Florida when I first started. And, um, and man, time flies. It's been, it's been over 10 years. It'll be 11 years. Um, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, hopefully it'll be 11 years for me. And, um, you know, I, I often uh, think about smoking weed or, like if I did anything, I know I'd do psilocybin. I used to love um, tripping out when I was younger, but it's been so long. And it's like, I remember a few years ago, I thought about smoking weed because I really don't think weed's this big gateway drug. I don't think I would smoke weed and then shoot heroin or smoke crack or, or whatever. But then um, 
the weed's so strong now, I haven't done anything in over 10 years, I'd probably take a hit and I would probably bug out. I'd get super anxiety. Then yep. I'd start thinking about everything and being like, why did I do that? And and I just, oh, yeah. like, I played out the tape in my head and I said, oh, yeah. why uh, why why fix something that ain't broken? Yep. You know what I mean? Like, what's the what's the what's the gain to it all you know what i mean so so i just don't but um like i said if somebody drinks in my soul boss i know if i drank i'd want to do coke and like dr- drugs and when i say drugs i mean drugs i don't mean weed drugs booze you know i'll throw you out weed i don't i'm not gonna throw a guy out for smoking weed do i smoke weed no i don't but i don't you know what i mean i i just think it's um I don't know, pretty much harmless. I mean, people don't smoke weed and suck at their best friend or, you know, get in a car accident and kill somebody. Uh, you right. know, so it's it's uh, it's a low-level thing. Um, we're going to make some picks today. I'm going to put the hat on. I'm a man of many hats, Bundy. <laughs> what do you... Money, what do you, uh, do you like this one? Uh, that's a nice one. Yeah? What's it say? Thailand? Yeah. 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 What about this one? Which one? I think this one right there. Yeah? Yeah, that's nice. The fedora, huh? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do the fedora. Um, I hope everyone had a great New Year's. Like I said, it's it's New Year's Eve now, but this will be out. This will be out Friday. I hope everyone had a great New Year's and uh, everyone has a good year. I'm really not going into the New Year's with any any beefs with anybody. I've had a couple of, uh, you know, arguments with some friends that right now I'm not talking to one person. <clears throat> but, hey, you know, shit happens. I don't. I don't like any drama in my life. When I was younger, I'd be always fucking, you know, fighting or arguing with this one or that one. I mean, I got a couple of things, you know, I still don't talk to my sister. She, uh, <clears throat> she wrote a book about me along, you know, 10 years, 12 years ago and really fucking, uh, made me look bad in it. And, um, you know, we, I don't speak to her and I still, I still hold that grudge. People say forgive and forget. And, and it is the way to be. You know what I mean? That's a tough one. It's a tough one for me, but but right now I'm trying to go into this year with with uh no bullshit, you know, no negativity. If someone don't like me or ain't talking to me, whatever it is, what it is, move on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't dwell yeah. on it, and uh, just try to um like they say in in uh, in sobriety, don't uh don't hurt another addict. You know, don't ever hurt. Don't you know? I only try to help another person and <clears throat> that same can go for anything. Don't try to hurt another person, man. Try to help. And if you got, if you got beef with someone, whatever, if, 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 if you think they're in the wrong, you know, try to look at, uh, you know, what you did to cause that. You know what I mean? I learned that too, getting sober. Like, well, what, what part did you play in it? You know what I mean? It's always like the ex-girlfriend. She's a fucking whore. Well, were you faithful to her? Well, well, no, sure. Right. Right. <laughs> I wasn't, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I, I try try not to dwell on stuff, man. You know what I mean? If you don't think you did something wrong and someone really did something bad to you, then, hey, they're going to they're gonna sink their own ship. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're going to do something. If, they, if they're fucking scumbags and bad shit's going to happen to them. And try to keep it with good karma. And, and uh, Bundy? Yeah. Here's the new year. Yeah. Right, Justin? Buddy. Here's the new year, brother. All right. That's our episode one. 13? 13 in the books. Yeah. Like a bunch of narcotics. There were. Pull up in the new robbery. Living like Judd.